Hello Flight Simmers and welcome back to Alpha Hotel Flight Simulator Training. Before we hop in the aircraft and go flying, we'll want to spend some time on the ground getting familiar with our aircraft. This will be ground school lesson number one, which is going to focus on the aircraft exterior and controls. The Cessna 152 is a single engine, two seat, high wing trainer and personal aircraft. The aircraft was manufactured from 1977 to 1985 and is a modernization of the Cessna 150, manufactured between 1958 and 1977. It featured a larger engine and increased gross weight compared to the 150. The 152 is a good training aircraft due to its straightforward handling and docile flight characteristics. Now let's take a look at the components of the 152. An aircraft's main body is called the fuselage. It typically contains seats for pilots and passengers and may contain compartments for cargo or baggage. In a single engine airplane, it also houses the engine. In the 152, it contains the engine, two seats, and a small baggage area under the rear window. The aircraft's wings allow the aircraft to develop lift. You notice how the top surface of the wing is curved and the bottom surface is relatively flat. As air flows around the wing, it accelerates over the curved upper surface of the wing, causing the pressure to drop and creating lift. Towards the outside and back of the wing are control surfaces called ailerons. These control roll, or the left and right banking motion, of the wings. When the control wheel, or the joystick, is moved left, the left aileron moves up and the right aileron moves down, deflecting the left wing down and the right wing up. The opposite happens when you move the controls right. Towards the inside and back of the wing are secondary control surfaces called flaps. They can be extended in 10 degree increments from 0 to 30 degrees and are controlled by a flap handle that operates an electric motor moves the flaps into the desired position. Flaps increase both lift and drag and change the shape of the wing. They allow for a higher descent rate without an increase in airspeed, allow the aircraft to fly at slower speeds, and are used primarily during approach and landing. The flaps in the 152 are slotted flaps as they have a gap or slot between the wing and the front of the flap when fully extended. The structures that go between the fuselage and the wing are called struts and they provide structural support for the wing. If you're wondering what this little structure is that's about a third of the way up the strut, that's actually a step that pilots can use to step on and hoist themselves up to get a view of the top of the wing. Obviously we're not going to be using that in flight simulator. The tail section of the aircraft is called the empennage. The structures on the empennage include the horizontal stabilizer, which looks like a small wing on the tail of the airplane, and the vertical stabilizer, which looks like a fin going up vertically. On the back of the vertical stabilizer is a primary control surface called the rudder. This is used to control yaw, or the left and right movement of the aircraft's nose. Whichever way the rudder deflects will deflect the tail in the opposite direction and the nose in the same direction. In flight, the rudder is not typically used by itself, but rather in conjunction with the ailerons. In a real aircraft, when the aircraft rolls in one direction, the nose tends to yaw momentarily in the opposite direction. This is called adverse yaw, and you use the rudder to counteract this. In flight simulator, however, this force is very minimal, so you don't really have to use rudder in your turns. In fact, if you have a twist type joystick with a very small range on the rudder axis, it's very easy to overdo the rudder input, so I don't recommend using it to make turns in the air. In flight simulator, you'll be using it primarily during takeoff and landing, particularly crosswind takeoffs and landings. Rudder control is also linked to the nose wheel steering in the 152, so use the rudder input to steer on the ground. More on that later. On the back of the horizontal stabilizer is the primary control surface called the elevator. As you might imagine, this controls the aircraft's pitch or the up and down movement of the aircraft's nose. As you move the stick or wheel back, the elevator moves up 
deflecting the tail down and the nose up. When you move the sticker wheel forward, the elevator moves down, deflecting the tail up and the nose down. As the old saying goes, push down, houses get bigger. Pull back, houses get smaller. Just be careful. If you pull back too much, the houses start to get bigger again. We'll talk about that more in the lesson on stalls. You'll notice that there is an additional control surface at the back of the right elevator. This is the elevator trim tab. It's controlled by the trim wheel. The trim tab is used to set the elevator so it maintains a desired pitch and you don't have to constantly use elevator inputs to keep it there. Basically, you use the elevator to set your pitch and the trim tab to keep it there. Aside from the primary flight controls, it's probably the most important control to learn how to use. A well-trimmed airplane should basically fly in steady state flight without you having to touch the controls. All right, let's talk about the engine or the power plant, if you want to use the fancy term, on the 152. The model is a Lycoming O235. The engine is normally aspirated, meaning it's not turbocharged. That means as it uh, gets into the higher altitudes, it is going to lose power pretty quickly, and the service ceiling is relatively low. The rated service ceiling on the airplane is uh, 14,700 feet, but you're going to be very hard-pressed to get the airplane there unless you're very light and it's a pretty cool day, and it's going to take you most of the day to get there. The engine is air-cooled, which means it uses the flow of air over the engine to keep the engine from overheating. It's also carbureted, which means it's not fuel-injected like most modern engines. It uses a carburetor to get fuel to the cylinders. This makes it susceptible to a phenomenon called carburetor icing, and we'll talk more about that when we get to the carburetor heat control. It's rated at 110 horsepower, which is not a lot of horsepower but it is enough to get you and another and a passenger and full load of fuel and maybe some small bags into the air and going at about 100 knots. All right, as far as the propeller goes, obviously it is two-bladed. When you get into the larger airplanes, you can have as many as five, but on the small piston engine airplanes, we start with two on this one. When you get into Bonanzas and Barons, you'll run into three-bladed uh, props, uh, but starting out, you just get two. And it is a fixed pitch propeller, which means we do not have any control over the angle of the propeller blade uh, from the cockpit. All right, so let's talk about the landing gear a little bit in the 152. Uh, the landing gear configuration is a nose wheel or tricycle configuration versus a tail wheel or conventional configuration. Each of the main gear has a steel spring strut that's designed to absorb the massive amount of shock that a student pilot learning to land for the first time will undoubtedly inflict on it. Uh, the nose wheel, also you see this little silver part right here, is a air oil strut, which is also designed for shock absorption, although it can't take quite as much punishment as the main gear, at least in a real 152. Uh, each main landing gear has a hydraulically actuated brake that's actuated on the top of the rudder pedals and they can be operated independently they can be set up in flight simulator to operate independently but there's not any real reason to do that uh, the only reason you would need to operate them independently is if you need to make a tight radius turn on the ground and typically in flight simulator you're not going to need to do that so if you have it set up like I uh, showed you how to set it up in the uh, setup video uh, toggling the brakes will toggle both of these at the same time which is all you need to be able to stop the airplane. The nose wheel is also a steerable nose wheel. It's hooked up to the rudder pedals so anytime you actuate the rudder pedals or you move the rudder back and forth it also moves the nose wheel back and forth and that's what enables you to steer on the ground. Uh, that nose wheel turning though is not animated so even though the rudder will move the nose wheel will not move but the airplane will still steer left and right. There are a number of components on the airplane that are very realistically modeled. It's a very realistic model in flight simulator, but there's not anything we can actually do with them as simulator pilots. But just in case you're wondering what they are, we'll talk about them. Uh, up on the top of the airplane, and then underneath the uh, bottom of the fuselage there, and then also on the tail, there are some antennas that are for your navigations and communications radios. 
up on the top of the wing we have two little red caps those are your fuel caps and that's where the fueler would put in fuel if they actually were animated to do that in flight simulator you also might be wondering what the little circles are underneath the uh, tail and the, the wing struts there those are tie down points for tying down the airplane in the real world uh, we also talked about the step on the strut there's also another strut on the landing gear strut and then there's a, actually a handle up on the cowl there uh, for getting to the top of the wing and doing an inspection on top of the wing. Again, not anything we can use as a simulator pilot. Those are just things that a real world pilot would use. And over on the left wing, you'll notice there's a little hole in the left wing. That is actually a stall warning horn right there. Uh, that is pneumatically actuated. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the stall training lesson. There's also what's called a pitot tube over here, which we'll talk a little bit more about when we get to the airspeed indicator. Uh, we also have a step down here for getting to the top of the airplane in conjunction with this handle and that step. And then you'll see a little circle over on the right hand side of the aircraft. That is uh, your static point which we use to measure air pressure for your altimeter and your vertical speed indicator. There's also a little uh, air inlet here and there's air inlets on either side of the interior of the wing there as well. Let's talk a little bit more about engine components that we can see from the exterior of the aircraft. The cover of the engine is called the engine cowling. You have two air intakes. The first intake, this is a, a single intake here, and that's for cooling air. That allows air to flow over the engine and prevent it from overheating. Then the second air source is right down here, and you can see it's got a filter on it. That's actually the air that goes into the carburetor and into the cylinders for combustion. So that's the air that lets the engine run. Uh, and that has a filter on it so that it doesn't get contaminants into the engine. Then the exhaust pipe is right down here. The propeller, of course, has a central hub there, and that is called the spinner. One more component that's modeled but not really used is uh, these little wicks on the end of the ailerons, and you also see them on the uh, rudder and the elevator. These are called static wicks and their purpose on a real airplane is to dissipate static from the airplane if you're flying through clouds or rain, particularly heavy rain. Uh, these help to, you can build up static electricity when you do that and these help to dissipate that and pull that static away from the airplane so it doesn't mess with your electrical components. Not really standard equipment on most 152s. Most 152s aren't equipped to go in in instrument conditions, uh, but they're modeled and that's what they are. All right, so that finishes up ground school lesson number one. In the next ground school lesson, we'll hop in the cockpit, take a look at the aircraft instruments and aircraft systems. We'll see you next time.